Hi, in this video, we are going to be making API request to the free dictionary API. For our purposes, we'll be using C Sharp. Now, what we will be doing is we'll be prompting the user to enter any word, right? And we'll take that word and then make an API request to this free dictionary API. And what this free dictionary API will do is return a response in the form of a nested JSON. And in this nested JSON, we are only interested in the definition of the word, right? Say, for example, we enter the word hello, right? The free dictionary API will give us a response of a JSON of the word hello. And in this JSON, what we are interested in is in meanings and inside meanings is in definitions and inside definitions is this definition. That's what we are interested in and that's what we will be extracting. So to begin, we need to have access to meanings, right? We need to have access to meanings. So what we will do is we'll create an object class. Let's create that object class that will store a meanings member variable. Okay. We're going to say public class word and in this class we are only interested in the list meaning meanings instance variable creating a getter and setter for it so what we have done here is we've created a member variable of type meanings that will help us in extracting the JSON. Now let's get back to the JSON. So you see in this JSON response, we've accounted for the fact that this meanings is a list as evidented by the elements inside it. Right. Now in this meanings list, we are interested in definitions. Right. We are interested in this definition, but definitions is also in itself a list, a list of definition, example, synonyms, and antonyms. So, therefore, we need to create a class of meaning which will contain a member variable of definitions list. So, we come back to our code and say public class meaning right and inside meaning we have a member variable public list definition definitions getter and setter for it as well create a getter and setter variable for it as well okay so now that we've created the definition the definitions member variable right we have access to the meanings and inside the meanings we have access to the definitions now we need access to the definition itself so we also need to create a final class that will give us direct access to the definition So in this time, we're going to say public string definition. Okay. Now, we don't need to say that definition is a list here because if we check back on the JSON, we're only having definition and its value, right? We don't have the square brackets there, right? So therefore, definition is a string. So now we have access to meanings and inside meanings we have access to definitions and inside definitions we have access to the definition. Now it is time to make our request. So let's go and make our request. So firstly what we're gonna do is create a class. So we've created a class and named it Dictionary API, and now we're going to create an instance 
of HTTP client. And we will be using main to make our requests, operations. Okay, so we created a dictionary API class and we've created an HTTP client instance and then we've created the main method calling it async in order for us to be able to fetch the result at any time because we don't really know when we will be fetching the result, when the results will be given back to us. So when we're making a request, we're not going to get the results immediately. So we need to call the method async. So firstly, we're going to prompt the user to enter a word. And then we're going to take that word and store it in a variable we will name query. Okay, so what these two lines do is this one prompts the user to enter the word and this one takes that input and stores it in this variable query. Now we need to have a reference to the URL of our free dictionary API. So where do we get this URL? We go back to our site and we go up and they say that the basic syntax of the URL request to the API is shown below. This is our URL. But note that this word here, this is a query word. It's this word we are meant to replace with the word that we are looking for. In this case here, as an example, they use the same URL, but with the word they replaced the word with the word they are looking for, which was hello, right? So we're going to copy this URL. And we're going to paste it here as a string, right? Now, we need to replace this word with the word that the user is looking for, right? So we can replace this by deleting this and then concatenating or concatenating the string. You know how to concatenate a string in C sharp. We are concatenating or adding the string query to our URL. Okay, good. Now that we have our URL, it's time to make the request. So we're gonna do that in a try catch block to make sure we catch any HTTP request exceptions. So catch any HTTP request exceptions. And we're gonna print whatever error we get. Right, so just to alleviate the confusion, what happen what is happening here is we're making a try catch block and we're saying that if there's an HTTP request exception, print that exception E. Right. The E will go instead of this zero here. Okay. So now let's begin making the request. We will be expecting a response, right? And we're going to say client dot get string I sync and passing in the URL. Now remember that we don't know when uh, when we're going to use the um, we don't know when we're going to get the response. So we're going to have to call await here, right? So now that we have the weight there, we're getting this response. And now we can print the response to see what we got. Okay. So by now we should be able to print this 
let's respond in the console. So let's do a quick rundown before we run the code. So we've created the dictionary API class. We've created the instancy HTTP client. And then we're using that instancy inside of the main by saying client did get string async. And then we're passing in this URL that we got from our free dictionary API. And we replaced the word with the word that we are looking for, with the word that the user entered, with the query that the user is interested in, right? And saying that we're putting this in a try catch exception in case something goes wrong and we want to know what went wrong by printing this line. So let's run the code then. Okay. So this is right here are warnings that there are some values that should be nullable. So we'll check that later. But for now, you can see that we are being prompted to enter a word. So let's enter the word hello, for instance. Okay, good. Now you see that we're getting the same format, JSON format that we got from the site, that we saw from the site, the dictionary, the free dictionary API site. So we're getting our word hello it's fanatic and the meanings of course it's hard to search through all of it but you can see that we have definitions we have a definition we have to greet you see so for our purposes we want to only show the definition of the word and not the whole JSON right so how do we do that well we already have our object classes for mapping. We created this earlier in order to filter out the definition that we need. So let's use these. But first, let's get rid of these nullable types. So we need to make sure that in meanings we check that we make sure that we, we declare that these values can be nullable. By putting a question mark. Oh, sorry, this should go here on the string itself. And here as well. Okay, so now let's filter or deserialize our response. So we're going to say list word word equals to JSON serializer dot deserialize our list word from the word class passing in the response Right. Now, as you can see here that we're getting an error. The name JSON serializer does not exist in the current context. That is because we need to declare that we're using this up here at the top of our class. But outside of it, obviously. So we're going to say using, sorry, using system, the text, the JSON right and now you can see that the error is gone however we need to declare that this can be null okay so now that we have that right we can begin to filter out for the definition of the word so what we can do is remove this response and say definition Right, put a zero here and then pass in the word from this word that we created here. And remember that the word in itself is a list, so we need to say the first element of our list dot we want to get meanings 
and this meanings comes from this member variable here that we created remember we want to get our first meaning because this is also a list dot definitions definitions also comes from this meaning member variable and it's also a list so we're gonna get our first definition and finally dot definition right and that's it we are done we have created our dictionary right so let's test this out but before we test it out let's go through the code so remember that we said here we're going to get our word from this URL right from our query word from this URL and then we're gonna take that response that we got which when we printed it out first was a JSON and we're gonna deserialize it or filter it out to suit our purposes for our purposes we only interested in the definition of the word right so we're gonna deserialize it into a list of word class right and then we're gonna take this word and then from the words list we only interested in the first word and in that first word we want to fetch all the meanings and we're only interested in the first meaning and in that first meaning we're only interested in the first definition which is definition right so and then we print this out so now let's check it so we're running it okay we still have some nullable references but do not worry about that right now so enter the word right we enter the word hello again We enter the word hello and now we're getting a definition hello or an equivalent greeting you see now let's enter another word life you see we've entered the word life and we we get back the definition the state of organism preceding their life death characterized by biological processes and what 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 let's run another one enter the definition enter the word car we get a definition a wheeled vehicle that moves it so we've successfully implemented our dictionary